Taking a deeper dive into GTA 6, we find out new info around the highly anticipated Trailer 2, highly probable predictions, and the projected timelines associated with this game. Post the unveiling of Trailer 1 on December 5th, 2023, providing enthusiasts with a tantalizing glimpse into the world of the forthcoming GTA installment. Rockstar has maintained a notable silence. Despite the absence of official announcements, the internet has been abuzz with articles and claims, including a recent piece highlighting details allegedly leaked by a Twitter user. It's prudent to approach such assertions with a discerning eye, given the prevalence of misinformation in the digital space, especially with the emergence of numerous GTA 6-themed accounts. Interestingly, amidst the sea of speculations, it's essential to acknowledge the presence of individuals who accurately leaked details about the first trailer on Reddit before its official release. One mysterious figure stands out, predicting not only the featured song, but also pinpointing the release date, directing curious minds to their username as a form of verification. This individual, while refraining from sharing disruptive insights into the game's development, did provide a tantalizing glimpse into new features. Among the disclosed features are the intriguing prospect of dual-wielding weapons, confirmed instances of gore and dismemberment, and the promise of varied sunset colors. A unique addition to the GTA universe includes a Miami-themed 3v3 basketball element, with a connection drawn to a hypothetical collaboration between Rockstar and LeBron James. The figure behind these leaks, having created their account on November 19th, 2023, mysteriously vanished shortly after sharing these details, leaving behind a trail of speculative wonder. As we navigate through these uncharted waters of gaming anticipation, the veil of mystery surrounding GTA 6 continues to captivate and enthrall gaming enthusiasts worldwide. Diving deeper into the intricacies surrounding the leaked gameplay footage, it's important to clarify that what we witnessed is not a true representation of the final product. The showcased gameplay is derived from an older build, and the developers have assured the gaming community that the game will undergo significant visual enhancements. This preliminary look is merely a glimpse, offering little resemblance to the expansive and refined map that will unfold when the game is officially released. In evaluating the validity of information, it's pertinent to underscore that Jamie King's perspectives on GTA 6 hold little value, and the credibility of the Reddit leak stands stronger. As is customary in the gaming landscape, a level of skepticism is warranted, particularly given the prevalence of misinformation circulating through various GTA 6-related accounts. Now, turning our focus to the anticipation surrounding the release of the second trailer for GTA 6, historical trends provide valuable insights. Examining the timelines of previous releases, such as GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2, reveals a consistent pattern. The second trailer typically arrives approximately a year after the debut of the first one. This established rhythm aligns with expectations for GTA 6. Considering the guidance from Rockstar and its parent company, Take-Two Interactive, which envisions the game's release in fiscal year 2025, ending on March 31st, the stage is set for an eagerly awaited gaming experience. The projected revenue of $8 billion underscores the ambitious plans to deliver groundbreaking titles, with GTA 6 at the forefront. The confirmation of the 2025 release through the first official trailer adds another layer of certainty to the equation. With the prospective release of GTA 6 in the first quarter of 2025, the logical assumption is that the second trailer will make its debut sometime in 2024. Speculations within the gaming community have surfaced, with one user dissecting the first trailer and estimating an August or October release for Trailer 2, followed by a potential final trailer in January. The sentiment resonates with the idea of maintaining momentum and sustaining excitement among fans. An intriguing twist enters the narrative with the potential release of the PS5 Pro in November, suggesting a strategic move to reduce the waiting time for additional information. As the community engages in this dynamic dance of anticipation, excitement mounts for the next trailer, where glimpses of actual gameplay are eagerly awaited. Venturing deeper into the realm of anticipation surrounding GTA 6, comparisons with Red Dead Redemption 2, which boasted six trailers, underscore the immense budget and expansive scope that the upcoming installment is set to showcase. Expectations are set for a dynamic marketing approach with two trailers, each dedicated to unraveling the story of a protagonist. This anticipation is further fueled by the likelihood of a dedicated gameplay trailer, shedding light on the mechanics and features, as well as a comprehensive trailer providing insights into the vastness of the game's map. 
Additionally, there's a tantalizing prospect of a trailer focusing on the diverse groups and gangs that inhabit distinct zones within the game. This comprehensive promotional strategy is indicative of a monumental project that promises to redefine the gaming landscape. Now, let's unravel the rationale behind the assertion that GTA 6 is poised for a late 2025 release. Examining the historical trajectory of game releases, particularly the two-year gap between the initial trailer and the game hitting the shelves, aligns seamlessly with fiscal reports. This alignment serves as a solid foundation for confidence in predicting the game's availability by the end of 2025. Pondering the intriguing possibility that GTA 6's launch timeline might mirror that of its predecessor, GTA 5, sparks curiosity. Noting the first teaser trailer's debut on November 2nd, 2011, and comparing it with GTA 5's unveiling on December 5th, 2023, there's a parallelism that invites speculation. Expanding this analogy to include the release of the first two screenshots for GTA 5 on July 12th, 2012, suggests a timeline for potential content drops for GTA 6. If we entertain the notion of a one-year gap between the first and second trailers, mirroring historical patterns, and factor in Rockstar's potential aim for a fall release, an intricate timeline unfolds. Of course, acknowledging the industry's unpredictability, potential delays could sway this projection. Encouraging the community to share their insights, the script opens a channel for predictions regarding the release of GTA 6 Trailer 2. For those intrigued by a personal timeline, a meticulous projection is presented. The anticipation of Trailer 2 making its debut around April or May 2024, strategically ahead of the summer, is poised to keep the gaming community buzzing. Subsequent to this, the prediction of a third trailer, potentially a gameplay trailer, surfacing around October or November of the same year, with the possibility of extending into December, adds to the excitement. Early 2025 is earmarked for another critical trailer, presumably a launch trailer, complemented by TV spots to amplify the buzz. During the interim periods, additional content drops are anticipated, featuring new screenshots, short-form videos, and artworks, ensuring a sustained engagement with the gaming audience. Acknowledging the evolving landscape of marketing, the script posits that character trailers, a hallmark of GTA 5's promotional strategy, may not be a focal point this time. The shift from three protagonists in GTA 5 to two in the current installment lends credence to this assertion. The first trailer introduced Lucia, and the prediction is that the second trailer will shift the spotlight to Jason, offering glimpses into his character and potentially unveiling more facets of the game's map, including Sport Gilhorn. Furthermore, a dedicated story trailer is envisioned, delving deeper into the narrative, characters, and plot. If Rockstar aims to sustain the momentum generated by the first trailer and is eyeing an early 2025 release, the likelihood of witnessing the second trailer before the summer of the current year becomes plausible. This expansive and speculative exploration of GTA 6's potential trajectory invites the gaming community to share their perspectives, fostering an engaging discourse in the comments section. If you haven't been following the latest news on GTA 6 over the past year, you might be surprised by how much information has emerged. Here's a comprehensive update on everything we currently know about GTA 6. We have details about a wide array of items and tools featured in GTA 6. These include the auto dialer, binoculars, immobilizer bypass, cutoff tool, painkillers, pool cue, trauma kits, golf driver, food and drink, golf putter, USB drive, golf iron, crowbar, golf wedge, torch, jammer, duffel bag for looting, cigarettes, and a loot backpack. Let's discuss the game engine. Developers have made significant enhancements to the Euphoria physics engine, improving ragdoll physics and overall game mechanics compared to GTA 5. Now let's discuss the multiplayer aspect. In a leaked clip from GTA 6, we observed a multiplayer session with a player count. This suggests there were two players present in the lobby out of a maximum capacity of 32 slots. This mirrors the setup seen in Red Dead Online and GTA Online, where the capacity is stated as 32, but practically accommodates 30 players plus two spots reserved for spectators. While hopes for larger lobbies persist, it appears the testing phase involves 30 player lobbies. Leaks also suggest advanced weather systems, including heavy fog, a feature that was less common in GTA 5. Moving on to collectibles, there's mention of Wyman car parts. In a clip featuring Lucia, a developer is seen placing a cardboard box with a circular icon, indicating it as lootable. Debug text on this box identifies it as collectibles car parts and Wyman car parts boxed generic used suggesting players can collect car parts, possibly tied to a character named Wyman who shares a passion for classic cars with Jason. 
Regarding collectible hats, there's footage of Jason in an apartment where a developer interacts with a hat labeled as an ambient collectible hat. According to debug text, this hints at the inclusion of clothing items as ambient collectibles within the game. Additionally, a comprehensive list of all brands featured in the game is provided. While some brands may be integral to the story, many are included for realism and immersion. The list is displayed on screen for viewers to pause and inspect at their leisure. Similar to Red Dead Redemption 2, the weapon wheel in GTA 6 will be divided into three sections. Weapons, Equipment, and Gear. Notably, players can dual wield different weapons and access a quick item inventory displayed in the bottom left corner of the screen. While leaked recreations of the weapon wheels provide a glimpse, it's expected that the final version may evolve during the game's development. In a video snippet, an NPC is observed shooting at Jason, triggering a health tip to appear on the left side of the screen when Jason's health decreases. Additionally, the game will feature lighting and skybox systems, similar to those in Red Dead Redemption 2 promising improvements such as volumetric clouds and better lighting effects. Speaking of criminal activities, noteworthy events include the Hank's Waffles heist, where Jason and Lucia pull off a daring robbery. Other clips suggest Jason possesses an ability to perceive through walls. Additionally, there are events focused on searching vehicle trunks, which may yield valuable items or nothing at all. Lastly, delivery and pickup warehouse events are mentioned for Port Gelhorn, though specific details are still unclear. When it comes to accessible buildings, GTA 6 offers a wide range, including the Malibu Club, a pawn shop, Jack of Hearts Club, supermarkets, bars, restaurants, apartments, and laundromats, all enriching the immersive experience. Players will also have the ability to command the other character during a robbery. In leaked footage, a prompt advises players to either check in with Jason or hold for more options, indicating the potential to issue commands to your partner during a heist. This feature aims to streamline gameplay, enabling effective control of both characters simultaneously. Unlocking doors and gates is also demonstrated, as shown in a video featuring Jason in the San For San area. Debug text indicates locked door panels, suggesting the necessity to unlock specific entry points. In addition, a new police system called Time Until Cops Dispatch has been implemented. Now, when you commit a crime, the police won't immediately arrive. Instead, you'll have a brief window to evade capture before law enforcement begins to converge on your location. Security cameras play a role in surveillance, but their function differs from GTA Online. Instead of instant detection, there's a detection meter similar to games like Payday 2 or 3. As the meter fills up, you must break line of sight within a certain time frame to avoid detection. Players also have the ability to restrain NPCs using zip ties, as seen in leaked footage. This feature enhances the realism of robberies, offering greater control over the situation. Additionally, players can loot vehicles, as briefly shown in the Hank's Waffles video. A button prompt to examine SUV suggests the ability to inspect random vehicles and potentially steal valuables from them. A while back, a significant leak revealed a plethora of potential world encounters, random events that occur as you navigate the game world. I've displayed these on your screen, and while I won't go through each one, You'll notice they're quite fascinating. From parking disputes to donut burnouts, protests, and even someone getting a concussion, these events add depth and realism to the world of Vice City. It's exciting to imagine strolling through such a dynamic environment where something is always happening. Take a moment to review them if you like. They're quite impressive. Moving forward, the community has endeavored to construct a map of GTA 6 based on coordinates and locations gleaned from leaks. This preliminary map outlines Vice City situated at the bottom right. The top section of the map remains somewhat enigmatic for now. Nonetheless, this initial map looks incredibly promising, and the excitement for exploring its intricacies is palpable. For the setting, we know about three different gangs in Vice City. San For San, a Haitian gang, the Guardia Brothers, and the Far Right Militia. These details create an exciting anticipation for what to expect in GTA 6. Now, let's delve into the variety of confirmed wildlife in the game. Players can expect encounters with snakes, seagulls, skunks, raccoons, alligators, wading birds, squirrels, southern leopard frogs, crayfish, lizards, skunk apes, pigeons, opossums, and even whales. While these are the animals confirmed so far, we anticipate discovering more upon the game's release. These are the species we're aware of at present. Fences in GTA 6 are not just physical barriers to jump over or drive through. They are individuals involved in illegal transactions within the game.
Acting as middlemen, these characters buy illegal items from players to resell them to others. Now, let's explore the AI witness system and police recognition feature, which are notably significant. In the Hank's Waffles robbery video, beneath the wanted level stars, there's a mention of full description, suggesting that witnesses can provide detailed information about you. This implies that once identified, the police will recognize you. When Lucia enters a police vehicle, there's initially no vehicle description, but this quickly changes to a full vehicle description. This indicates that law enforcement will possess detailed information about your vehicle. Moreover, the text warns that any vehicle seen entering will be noted by the authorities. This suggests that even after losing a wanted level, if spotted again in the same vehicle, the police will pursue and apprehend you. During the robbery scene, Jason attempts to prevent customers with yellow icons above their heads from calling the cops or fleeing. Additionally, a female NPC inside the diner exhibits similar behavior, with her icon flickering as Lucia leaves, turning red when surrounded by cops, and then fleeing upon spotting Lucia. These advanced NPC systems indicate a more sophisticated interaction model. Regarding item sharing, Jason and Lucia appear to be able to share items between them. For instance, in one clip, Jason steals items from containers, keeping some for himself while sharing others. Regarding sound design, it's no surprise that GTA 6 will feature more realistic soundscapes. Weapon sounds are crisper and more authentic, with increased volume for a more immersive experience. The impact of bodies hitting the floor will have a deeper thud, creating a more visceral effect. Police sirens will reverberate off buildings and environmental elements more realistically, while the sound of items will vary depending on the surroundings. For instance, if you're in a shipping container, sounds will echo more, adding depth to the auditory experience. Overall, these sound enhancements aim to emulate real-life scenarios more accurately, contributing to the game's realism. Moving on, we have an extensive list of every confirmed vehicle slated to appear in GTA 6, sourced from both the game files and leaks. I covered these in detail in a previous video, so I won't repeat them here. However, I've provided them on your screen for your reference. If you're interested in exploring the full list yourself, you can find them on page 30 of the document. The game features improved vehicle damage and handling, as seen in clips where crashes result in realistic effects, like splitting front fenders and bending car hoods. Furthermore, car interiors now include a functional GPS and waypoint system, enhancing immersion, especially in first-person driving. Players also have the option to enter a car from the passenger seat, adding a touch of realism to gameplay. These details highlight GTA 6's commitment to intricate design elements, evident in its meticulous attention to detail throughout the game. In addition, several new gameplay mechanics have been revealed. Players will now have the ability to walk while in cover, a long-awaited feature that introduces prone movement for the first time in GTA gameplay. Loot bags will allow for storing additional items, and players can now drop and pick up weapons. A new, under-fire animation has been introduced where characters cover their faces during combat, and players can opt to self-revive after sustaining heavy damage. Other significant mechanics include the ability to switch shoulders while aiming down sights, grappling during hand-to-hand -hand combat, and the introduction of buddy communications and a buddy ping system. This system, likely shared between protagonists Jason and Lucia, remains intriguing, with its full functionality yet to be revealed. Additionally, a new cover mode has been introduced, altering the way shooting from car windows is executed. Characters will now fully lean out of windows, enabling full 360-degree shooting. Furthermore, a new ability system has been introduced, potentially exclusive to Jason, allowing for a form of wall perception. Whether Lucia will possess this ability remains uncertain. Players can also interact with a greater variety of objects and NPCs, engaging in actions such as carrying bodies, committing robberies, issuing threats, and conversing during criminal activities. Moreover, the ability to pick up additional items, such as beer bottles and cans, enhances the overall gameplay experience. Let's explore some of the exciting new gameplay systems. Firstly, there's the introduction of money laundering, hinted at during the Hank's Waffles robbery. An icon found near the car wash property featured a washing machine with a dollar sign, suggesting potential opportunities for money laundering. This implies that players may be able to purchase properties with the intent of laundering money, although specific details on mechanics remain undisclosed. Nevertheless, it appears players will once again have the option to acquire certain types of businesses for illicit activities. Additionally, there's a confirmed lineup of weapons, which includes a rocket launcher, assault rifle, baseball bat, 
polymer pistol, knife, bolt action sniper rifle, Molotov cocktail, spear gun, which is intriguing, smoke grenade, compact SMG, flashbang, micro SMG, sniper rifle, heavy machine gun, auto rifle, and pump action shotgun. Moreover, glimpses of Jason in various states, sporting different hair lengths and facial hairstyles, suggest a hair growth system akin to Red Dead Redemption 2. This feature seems highly likely given the game's lineage. In terms of sustenance, players can consume items directly from their inventory. In a scene at a gas station, Jason adds wine, soda, and fruit to his inventory, highlighting the ability to eat and drink on the go, akin to mechanics seen in Red Dead and GTA Online. In GTA 6, you can expect to encounter raccoons rummaging through trash cans and stealing food bags. This is evidenced in the game files, which document three world events. Raccoon climbing out of garbage, raccoon rummaging through trash, and raccoon stealing food. While there are numerous intricate details to explore, we've uncovered a multitude of confirmed locations spread across Vice City and its surrounding areas. Naturally, Vice City serves as the central hub, encompassing neighborhoods such as Edgewater, North by City, Rock Ridge, Little Haiti, Vice Beach, South Beach, Washington Beach, and Key Biscayne. Additionally, there's Port Gellhorn, which appears to be a distinct city akin to Sandy Shores or Polito Bay from previous games. Other notable spots include Yorktown, Ambrosia, Sundown, The Keys, La Pearl, Red Hill, Lake Leonida, Hamlet, Stockyard, Homestead, Grass Rivers, Iken Faka, various underwater locations, and more. Each of these locales is meticulously detailed, with numerous mini locations nestled within them. It's remarkable how much information we already have about the game's expansive geography. In GTA 6, if your character sustains injuries, health will regenerate slowly over time. To expedite recovery, you can access the weapon wheel and utilize a healing item. Unlike GTA 5, where health only regenerates up to 50% naturally and requires snacks for full recovery, GTA 6 appears to allow for natural regeneration to full health, albeit at a slower rate. While not officially confirmed, it's implied that using a medical item will accelerate this healing process. Regarding open world activities, there are seven confirmed activities thus far. Dice, golf, fishing, races, adventuring, shipments, and delivery van events. A video showcases a delivery van event near the industrial area of Port Gellhorn, featuring active security cameras that add complexity to potential heists. Two distinct event types mentioned in the events list are Pragmatic Cool and Chaotic Romantic. Introducing a new event type called Cop Trap, strategically placed in various locations across the map. The confirmed locations are displayed on your screen, indicating that law enforcement will deploy different tactics to apprehend you. Next, let's explore the array of new features spanning two full pages. Firstly, an enhanced AI system is showcased in a video where enemy AI targets Lucia once she turns around. These adversaries demonstrate improved decision-making, adapting their shooting tactics dynamically based on the situation. Notably, they adjust their positioning relative to nearby objects, aiming to avoid frustrating head-glitching tactics. Additionally, they display more tactical behaviors, such as lowering their profile during reloads and employing lateral strafing while firing. NPC behavior has also undergone enhancements, with AI groups no longer wandering individually, but moving in clusters, reminiscent of the dynamics seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. This is evident in a video where Lucia encounters a group of tourists engaged in conversation as they pass by. This enriches pedestrian interactions beyond the independent roaming seen in GTA 5, now featuring diverse groups and even couples strolling together, enhancing the game's realism. A new gameplay feature allows players to surrender to the police during a robbery, introducing an intriguing dynamic with consequences yet to be fully revealed. Additionally, players can purchase gumballs from vending machines, potentially serving as a health boost, although specific effects remain speculative. Similar to GTA 5, your character's attire will accumulate dirt over time, adding a layer of realism. Hacking will also be a significant element, with Lucia seen carrying various hacking tools, though it's unclear if Jason will have access to these tools as well. Previous leaks suggested Lucia's role as the designated hacker, but further details will emerge in due course. Expect an enhanced car hijacking system in GTA 6. For example, the inclusion of an immobilizer bypass suggests that stealing luxury cars will be more challenging. Additionally, a tool called a Slim Jim will be used to unlock older vehicles, adding complexity to car theft. 
Moreover, events such as steel car in progress and steel car fail indicate potential complications during vehicle theft. Events like carjacking dash cat and carjacking dash advanced AI suggest further intricacies in vehicle related activities. Finally, the document concludes with approximately 20 pages detailing locations found in leaks that correspond to real world locales in Miami. This inclusion underscores the meticulous efforts put into crafting a rich and immersive game world. Great news for GTA fans, GTA 6 is making some big changes to the series. We've got a load of interesting info about the game that you should definitely hear about. Just a heads up, the details we've got are from leaked online footage, but sorry, no links or showing it. Still, loads of cool stuff to share, like new animals, AI changes, RPG elements, and more. Let's dive in. Fact 1 interactions with NPCs are getting way cooler. You'll have choices like threatening, robbing, shooting, or restraining them. Some missions will even have gesture-based actions, like Red Dead Redemption 2. Car damage is more realistic, and the insides are crazy detailed, with working dashboards. Fact 2. Let's talk weapons. GTA 6 is changing things up, taking a page from Red Dead Redemption 2. Instead of a big weapon wheel, you'll have slots for small firearms, melee weapons, rifles, and shotguns. No unlimited weapons, but you can drop and pick them up as you go. Fact 3. In the developmental phase, there was a sighting of Arthur Morgan's hat, though it's uncertain if this will make it to the final game. Players now have the option to surrender to the police during a robbery, which adds a thrilling twist. Police response time has been updated to feel more real, displaying a timer that varies based on the crime's severity. A murder, for instance, prompts a faster response than a robbery. The maximum wanted level is capped at 5 stars in GTA 6, and the possibility of a 6 star level seems improbable in the current gameplay being developed. By the way, I'm holding a monthly giveaway for a PlayStation 5. You just need to subscribe and you're entered. Now, back to the video. Fact 4. Police AI has significantly improved from the last game. Instead of rushing in blindly, they now exhibit more realistic and intelligent behavior. If you commit a crime and flee in a vehicle, cops will note the specific vehicle and license plate, making evading them more challenging. Fact 5. Let's talk about the strong emphasis on indoor locations in GTA 6. There's a bunch of different interiors to explore, like nightclubs, motels, hotels, restaurants, pawn shops, supermarkets, fast food joints, gun stores, shooting ranges, and the vice City Metro Station. Plus, they've added working elevators for a more immersive feel. Interestingly, there's a risk of players getting banned from stores, which adds a twist. Fact 6. Moving on to the characters. GTA 6 introduces two protagonists, Jason, played by Brian Zampella, and Lucia, portrayed by Alexandra C. Ekavari, who happens to be the franchise's first playable female character. You can switch between them instantly. They're also a couple, drawing inspiration from Bonnie and Clyde. Fact 7 clothing in the game behaves realistically. You can wear accessories like sunglasses, watches, wristbands, and hats in different ways. The detail is pretty cool, with sweat, dirt, and wrinkles adding to the realism. Fact 8. GTA 6, internally dubbed Project Americas, had a code name during development, like GTA 5, called Rush, and Red Dead Redemption 2, Bonnier. Originally, the plan was for a bigger map covering North and South America, but changes in Rockstar's approach scaled it down. Still, it's shaping up to be a memorable experience with its features and locations. Fact 9. GTA 6's map is officially bigger than GTA 5. This time, Vice City takes the spotlight, a Miami-inspired area with its surroundings, giving players a vast and diverse landscape. There's even a lake in one of the videos that hints at a significant part of Florida being in the game. Fact 10. Hold on to your seats. The jetpack's back. Shooting out of cars is on the cards too, adding more thrill. And get this, GTA 6 introduces 18 brand new vehicles to the franchise. Fact 11. In GTA 6, you'll bump into various events, like random mugger encounters and NPC-hosted yard sales. There are hints at riding events, which could mean horse riding, maybe even involving the Red Dead Redemption 2 team. Fact 12. New firepower alert. The spear gun's making its first appearance, letting players shoot underwater spears at their targets. Plus, there's a bunch of gear you can use, like binoculars, cutoff tools, flashlights, immobilizer bypasses, slim gyms, USB drives, tasers, zip ties, and auto dialers. Fact 13. The game has RPG stuff like weight and muscle management, seen in the Spool Couple Workout Challenge. Leaked footage showed Jason and Lucia's apartments. For example, Jason's place has a bathtub for in-game baths. Fact 14. Rockstar's planning to add new missions and cities regularly after GTA 6 launches. Whether this is for online or story mode isn't clarified yet. Expect an improved cover system, better than what we've seen in other Rockstar games. Fact 15. Make sure not to overlook the Kingston Hotel. It's a lively spot with pool parties and live music, making GTA 6 world even more vibrant. Fact 16. GTA 6 gets more interactive with working CCTV cameras that you can wreck. 
Be wary of cop traps, spots where cops wait to nab you, and be prepared for intense moments with dirty cop shakedown events. Fact 17. As part of the immersive feel, the game includes DUI sobriety tests, but it's unclear if they're for the player character or random NPCs. Rockstar's focus on detail shines, even with fully working gumball machines in the game. Fact 18. The gunplay in GTA 6 resembles what we've seen in Red Dead Redemption 2 and Max Payne 3. It might be worth giving those games a shot before GTA 6 comes out, if you haven't already. And activities? GTA 6 is loaded with options, from fishing and crazy golf to basketball, football and soccer. There are gyms to work out in, a yacht club, and even a racetrack. Fact 19. Get ready for a modern-day setting, post-GTA 5 events. The game is meticulously detailed, recreating many Miami landmarks like a grand tennis court, a bustling football stadium, and a vibrant amphitheater. The map includes an airport and a functional tram system, with an airport stop. And that's not all. The Florida Keys and a swampy region, the Grass Rivers reminiscent of the Everglades, are part of the game. Players can ride swamp boats in this area. Fact 20 weapons are diverse in GTA 6. You've got melee options like golf clubs, pool cues, crowbar and bats, along with a range of firearms from pistols to snipers and RPGs. You can even customize how your character holds weapons. Plus, there's a bunch of throwable stuff like grenades, molotovs, and even golf balls. Fact 21. One major upgrade in GTA 6 is NPC behavior. NPCs will come in different sizes and shapes, and their reactions will feel super real. If you wave a gun around, folks nearby might freak out. The game's also getting an intense injury system, including concussions. Fact 22. Next up, the amazing visuals and new features. Your character will grow facial hair naturally over time. Plus, the GTA 6 world will have a social platform called What's Up, kinda like a fun version of WhatsApp. And good news for fans, spoof versions of social media like Life Invader, Facebook, Bleeder, Twitter, and Snapmatic, Instagram, are making a comeback. Fact 23. Now let's talk about our main characters, Jason and Lucia, each with their own and a shared inventory. Your inventory can carry various items like wine, soda, and fruit. Also, there's a duffel bag system for easy transportation of supplies and weapons. Fact 24. Rockstar's being more cautious in storytelling, steering clear of offensive jokes, and being considerate about groups that might feel targeted. The story goes through chapters, like Red Dead Redemption 2's approach. Fact 25 GTA 6 is loaded with side activities, from backyard wrestling and racing to UFO events and beach bonfires. Small stuff matters too, like picking up cans from the ground. Jason and Lucia, the main characters, have special abilities similar to those in GTA 5. Fact 26. Jason and Lucia's safe house is a motel, a hub for their activities. The game's world has various street gangs, each with its own vibe. Characters have different personalities like romantic, chaotic romantic, cool, pragmatic chaotic, and pragmatic cool. Fact 27 gameplay tweaks in GTA 6 include the ability to zip tie NPCs for stealth elements and the option to carry bodies, adding depth to stealth mechanics. Fact 28 robberies are a big deal in GTA 6, ranging from big heists to smaller scores. You've got Easy scores like hitting bingo body shops, burnout skirts at Cafe Caraway, clothing stores, food trucks, massage parlors, and more. And now, there's even the chance to rob shipping containers, which adds a whole new level of excitement. Fact 29 gameplay is stepping up. For the first time in GTA, you can crouch and go prone, bringing in some tactical vibes. RPG elements are also in, with hints about hunger leveling and animal interactions, adding depth to the game. Fact 30. Excitingly, the Malibu Club and Ocean View Hotel are back in GTA 6. There are hints at events like Lost at Sea Island Camp and Lost Plane, suggesting possible island scenarios like Guarma from an earlier game. Fact 31. While exploring, you'll meet loads of wildlife alligators, bears, boars, dogs, snakes, raccoons, birds, frogs, bald cats, and rodents. You'll also spot symbols for plants and toxic waste around the game. Fact 32. In the game, watch out for the Scarface crime scene, maybe a nod to Tony Montana as an Easter egg. There's also a murder mystery called Missing Tourists. Plus, spots for campers are scattered around, hinting at the chance of owning a camper van later. Remember, these details are from development footage, so they might change before the final release. Still, they give us a great peek into what Rockstar's cooking up for GTA 6. Looks like YouTube is gearing up to investigate the leaked GTA 6 trailer. We're going to dive into all of that and more in this video. For those who might not remember or didn't catch it, Rockstar had a special plan for unveiling the first official GTA 6 trailer. It started with an announcement from Sam Hauser, the president of Rockstar Games. On November 8th, he posted on the Rockstar Games Newswire, a message from Rockstar Games. Next month marks the 25th anniversary of Rockstar Games. 
Thanks to the incredible support of our players worldwide, we've had the chance to create games we're truly passionate about. Without you, none of this would be possible, and we are so grateful for you joining us on this journey. In 1998, Rockstar Games was founded on the idea that video games could become as essential to culture as any other form of entertainment. We hope that we have made games you love and that we're part of that evolution. We're very excited to announce that in early December, we'll be releasing the first trailer for the next Grand Theft Auto. We look forward to many more years of sharing these experiences with you all. Thank you, Sam Hauser. We knew the GTA 6 trailer was set to drop in early December, but the exact date was a mystery until December 1st. That's when Rockstar Games posted on all their social media accounts, announcing that Trailer 1 would be released on Tuesday, December 5th at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. They also mentioned that the trailer would be available on YouTube. It was set to be a premiere, which for those who don't know, means the whole video is uploaded to YouTube with a countdown clock. This wasn't just Rockstar doing their thing, they had a partnership with YouTube. They even had a custom URL and a special countdown timer for the video. This was definitely a collaboration. However, a little over 12 hours before the trailer was supposed to go live on December 4th in the evening, it leaked. The trailer surfaced on X, formerly Twitter, from an anonymous account named Trailer Leaker. Their handle was GTA 6 Trailer Leak, and they posted the entire Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer in very low quality, with a Buy Bitcoin watermark and the caption BTC with a dollar sign. Rockstar Games quickly found out about it and got X to suspend the account. The account was actually threatening to release a high quality version of the trailer without the watermark if it reached a certain number of views or hit specific milestones. When that happened, Rockstar Games had to go into damage control mode. They put out an announcement saying, Our trailer has leaked, so please watch the real thing on YouTube. So, Rockstar ended up releasing the trailer early, basically cancelling the premiere countdown that was supposed to happen on YouTube. It was a mess. Neither Rockstar Games nor YouTube wanted this to happen. This raised the question, how did this leak occur? Was it a Rockstar Games employee or someone at YouTube? The only people with access to the trailer would be those responsible for Rockstar's YouTube account, and it's unlikely they would leak it. However, YouTube also has access to the trailer. The people behind the scenes at YouTube, high up enough to have access, could see and download the trailer. Naturally, fingers started pointing at YouTube. Now it looks like YouTube has officially responded. According to Tom Henderson over at Insider Gaming, from what I can gather, YouTube has investigated employees breaching their contractual agreements on two different occasions in the past 18 months due to employees accessing content on the back end. Following today, which unfortunately had some leaks surrounding Sony's state of play, we can presumably expect a third investigation fairly soon. Clearly one of the occasions mentioned in the past 18 months is the GTA 6 trailer leak. Honestly, this theory that someone from YouTube leaked it has been around since day one. With all the hype around GTA 6, it's not surprising someone couldn't keep it under wraps and leaked it, causing a huge stir. There have been so many leaks in the past few years, right before major events or trailer drops, making it more obvious that YouTube might be the source. This seems to be what happened with GTA 6, because the people with access are supposed to sign contracts or NDAs, preventing them from sharing this kind of information. So, what will Rockstar Games do next for GTA 6? Almost everything about this game has been leaked, from initial details like Project Americas, which turned out to be true after Rockstar's own investigation, to the fact that it's set in Vice City with a female and male protagonist duo. There were the major leaks in September 2022, the leaks right before the trailer was supposed to drop, and then the trailer itself leaking 12 to 15 hours early. It's unclear what Rockstar will do for the next trailer, character reveals, or gameplay footage. Will they risk uploading it to YouTube again after this disaster? Or will they stick to their newswire, despite insiders and data miners being able to access and share that information? Rockstar is definitely in a tricky situation. At least it's good news that YouTube is trying to crack down on this. They might be doing this because they could face massive lawsuits. The GTA 6 reveal was supposed to be one of the biggest events in video game history, and it was ruined because someone behind the scenes at YouTube likely leaked it. So, the big question is whether Rockstar Games will go back to YouTube. One way they could avoid a similar issue is by not announcing when they're going to upload the next trailer. If I had to guess, YouTube probably won't get another exclusive deal or a premiere. If Rockstar were smart, they'd upload the trailer shortly before the announced drop date and keep it private until then. That seems like the safest route. What do you guys think? How do you think Rockstar will handle future video uploads? Will they stick with YouTube? Move to their Newswire page, their own Rockstar Games site, 
or use another method entirely. We're delving into the realm of GTA 6 Online, the upcoming multiplayer aspect of Rockstar Games' Grand Theft Auto 6. We'll dissect all the insights gathered from leaks back in 2022, alongside an intriguing anti-cheat patent filed by Rockstar's parent company, Take-Two Interactive. This patent offers a glimpse into how the forthcoming online experience aims to ensure a safer environment compared to the current GTA Online. Furthermore, we'll explore a novel method Rockstar plans to implement in GTA 6 for managing online sessions. This innovation promises to infuse the expansive world of GTA 6 with a livelier atmosphere, enriching the player's immersion in its intricacies. Undoubtedly, GTA Online stands as a titan in the realm of multiplayer gaming. Its enduring popularity has significantly contributed to the ongoing success of GTA 5 over the past 11 years. This success owes much to Rockstar's astute strategy, crafting a robust core game with GTA 5 and then supplementing it with regular content updates for the online segment. By continually introducing new weapons, vehicles and attire, Rockstar keeps players engaged and motivated to accumulate in-game currency. As we eagerly anticipate the official unveiling of GTA 6, players are hopeful that it will address prevalent issues plaguing the current iteration. Chief among these concerns is the rampant presence of modders and cheaters, whose actions not only disrupt gameplay, but also pose security risks by unlawfully accessing personal data. To tackle this issue, Rockstar has devised a fresh approach set to debut in GTA 6. This method aims to bolster the game's security measures. The patent responsible for this enhancement is titled Method and Apparatus for Preventing Cheating in a Video Game Environment by Providing Obfuscated Game Variables. Filed by Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019, this patent outlines a system and method aimed at curbing cheating within video game environments. By disguising game variables in memory, the patent seeks to thwart attempts by players to monitor and manipulate values such as health, ammunition, and in-game currency for unfair advantages. Traditionally, developers combat such exploits by encrypting, coding, or obfuscating the location of these values, alongside implementing integrity checks to detect unauthorized modifications. However, these methods have drawbacks, as they often impact game performance and inadvertently expose variable locations to savvy attackers. Rockstar's innovation lies in masking the whereabouts of these variables, offering a more robust defense against cheating in GTA 6's online. I won't delve into the technical intricacies, but essentially, Rockstar employs a clever and seemingly straightforward technique to conceal these values. This makes it considerably tougher for attackers to pinpoint their locations. While the concept of masking values may seem straightforward, its effectiveness in bolstering stability and enhancing security for the future online segment is paramount. Moving forward, let's turn our attention to the next patent, titled System and Method for Session Management in a Multiplayer Network Gaming Environment. Filed by T2 Interactive in 2021, this patent addresses Disclosed Our Systems and Methods for Session Management. The Disclosed System allows for seamless merging and splitting of network sessions in a multiplayer network gaming environment. Seamless session management allows dynamic movement of players in a virtual world during gameplay without unnecessary loading and or stalling. As the players in the virtual world move around, the management of active game sessions can be improved to affect a more realistic perceived population. In this patent, Rockstar highlights the crucial role of online components in the success of many games, citing GTA Online as an example. They emphasize the challenges of managing network technology and resources to create a vibrant virtual world. Traditional MMO games often face limitations in session management, with some opting for single sessions that may restrict the depth of content due to increasing player counts. Others utilize multiple sessions, which can hinder feasibility, especially in peer-to-peer -peer exchanges like in GTA Online. To address these issues, Rockstar has developed a pioneering system for seamless session management. This innovative approach enables fluid splitting and merging of network sessions, allowing for a more immersive virtual world free from hardware and software constraints. Allowing players from different sessions, but in the same virtual area of the map, for example, to be merged into a single session. This allows players from previously different sessions to come across one another, thereby making the virtual world seem more populated. As an additional advantage, seamless session merging handles many network failures silently, 
In prior art systems, a player who loses network connectivity can be kicked out of a session and may not be able to rejoin because they are in a session by themselves. However, the session management system 100 allows for a disconnected player to exist in a session by themselves for a predetermined period before they are reconnected to the remaining players in the session or can be joined with another session. The method begins with monitoring a triggering event. In some embodiments, the triggering event defines when to merge two sessions or split a single session. For example, when the object, virtual players, are in the same session, move physically apart from another. The object by a predetermined virtual distance, this triggers the session management system to split the session into two different sessions. Likewise, if objects from two different sessions are within a predetermined virtual distance from one another, the session management system and merge the sessions to allow interaction between objects of the respective sessions. Other instances of monitored triggering events encompass various player and object actions, including changes in position or visibility, player entries and exits from the virtual world, and game-related activities like mission completions or tutorial beginnings. Rockstar's solution ensures seamless management of these events, preventing inconsistencies such as duplicated objects during session transitions. This approach accounts for factors like virtual geography, team management, networking resources, and social relationships to maintain continuity across sessions. For example, once a session is split, there can be two sessions, each with their own distinct copy of an object. Avoiding this split can avoid players that intentionally duplicate valuable objects to exploit virtual game economics. If these two sessions were to later merge, there can then be two identical objects in the same session. In this manner, the session management system advantageously avoids object duplication when two players are merged following a split. I trust that I've conveyed this information clearly. The implementation of this new system in GTA 6 promises to enhance the game's atmosphere, ensuring a more bustling world while maintaining a high level of detail throughout. Now, let's delve into what we've learned about GTA Online from the leaks of 2022. Multiplayer. In the bottom left in one of the clips, one can see there are two players in a 30-player lobby. This is because there are two slots for spectators, similar to GTA Online and Red Dead Online. There is also a reference to the script host. After that, there is a code which is either the session host or game master. Based on the information gathered, it seems probable that peer-to-peer -peer connections and 30-player lobbies will make a comeback in GTA 6 Online. However, there's a twist in how sessions will operate, allowing for seamless transitions between them. We're delving into the character creation aspect of Grand Theft Auto 6 and exploring how in-game NPCs will be generated. We'll take a look at a recent patent filed by T2 Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, which sheds light on the character creation process within the world of GTA 6. The patent reveals details about a new system developed by Rockstar Games, designed to streamline character creation and leverage the capabilities of current generation consoles more effectively. As game worlds grow in size and complexity, filling them with diverse and compelling characters and environments becomes increasingly challenging. Artists are tasked with creating every individual in-game object, from characters to buildings and interiors. As these worlds expand, the computational and design efforts required also increase. However, Rockstar Games has once again demonstrated innovation by developing a system that optimizes the rendering of 3D objects, ensuring efficiency without compromising on detail. This system addresses the challenges posed by the ever-expanding scope of game worlds. The patent we're examining in this video is titled System and Method for Game Object and Environment Generation. This video takes a deep dive into the generation of building interiors and characters within the expansive world being crafted by Rockstar Games. The patent starts off by providing an overview of how objects function within 3D spaces, as explained by Rockstar. Objects used in 3D graphics, often called assets, are a combination of geometry data, for example, the 3D model, and data for textures associated with the geometry data. An asset may be formed of one object, or it may be a composite object made from a combination of objects. The objects that form a composite object may in different contexts be used as independent assets unrelated to the composite object, or they may always be used as a subset of a larger object. 
They've provided an intro to how 3D objects function in games, aiming to help us grasp the workings of their latest invention. Persons of skill in the art will recognize that many different sorts of assets, such as vehicles, can be made from collections of subcomponents. For example, one aspect of the game might require a room, say a dining room. That entire dining room could be considered one game asset, but it will likely be created from several other assets, such as a table, chairs, dishes, glasses, wallpaper, flooring, etc. The glasses and chairs are independent of the larger dining room asset. As another example, a virtual person in the game, such a background character in a scene, would also be an asset. A person asset might be made up of a number of interchangeable objects, such as legs, a torso, arms, a head, etc. Because the person is made up of interchangeable objects, a variety of different persona sets can be made by mixing and matching different constituent parts. But a body part like a torso might always be used as a subpart of a larger body object. Prior art systems generally include libraries of game assets. The systems and methods of the present disclosure add a metadata layer to these game asset systems and provide modified development and game architectures to take advantage of the new metadata layer. This metadata layer includes tags that are added to the object in order to provide useful descriptors. In a preferred embodiment, these descriptors are completely freeform and without context. This allows developers to specify information about objects as needed without having to be locked into a ridge pre-configured schema. Rockstar's new system introduces an additional metadata layer and utilizes tags for enhanced functionality. In the next section, they provide examples illustrating how this tagging system will operate. For instance, characters and virtual beings within the game world will be assigned tags like skinny, chubby, average, attractive, ugly, young, old, and so on. They explain that this tagging system won't just apply to the 3D models or textures alone, but to the entire object package, which includes the model and its associated textures. Essentially, every aspect of a particular character will be tagged. For example, skin textures for elderly characters will be tagged as old, while arms and torsos for heavier characters will be tagged as chubby. They also list other tag examples provided by Rockstar, such as sporty, hipster, emo, preppy, nerdy, luxury, basic, new, worn out, business, and formal. Moreover, each component can have its own tag, and there can even be collections of assets with tags. Furthermore, they explain that all these assets can be stored on servers for easy developer access via an application programming interface, API. Additionally, these assets can be stored in various formats like XML, limited text, binary encoding, relational databases, and others, depending on the developer's proficiency. The systems and methods of the present disclosure further advantageously use the metadata via a rule set layer that uses the metadata to increase the speed and efficiency of game rendering, world or scene creation, game script execution, and rendering fidelity. In particular, the rule set allows designers to add context to the tags and to control their use by setting rules for the asset usage and the asset's interaction with the game and other objects. These rules are unrestricted and can be used to provide a wide variety of different capabilities and restrictions for objects. Let's take a look at how these tags will be put into action. For instance, if a jacket object is created, a tag like additional top garment can be assigned to it. Then, during gameplay, certain rules might search for this specific tag to identify objects like jackets. Furthermore, in a cold setting, the character's health stat may decrease at a slower rate because the character stays warm with the additional top garment. Moreover, the additional top garment tag could enhance rendering efficiency. For instance, if a character wears a shirt underneath a jacket, the shirt occupies memory space. Since the shirt is mostly covered by the jacket, Rockstar plans to replace the full shirt with a smaller texture, only containing the visible parts under the jacket, thus conserving memory. The combination of tags and the rule set can also be used advantageously for procedural generation of game objects and environments. For example, a game scene could be created in a game script by calling assets based on tags, rather than calling the assets explicitly. For example, if the game scene called for virtual characters in a movie theater, the game designer could simply specify a need for predetermined X number of characters with casual dress. If the designer wanted a sci-fi movie playing at the theater, it might also call for a higher percentage than normal of characters tagged nerdy. The metadata rule set interface would interpret these general instructions at game runtime to randomly generate virtual characters fulfilling those needs. Additionally, this system offers increased efficiency. For instance, the entire character object doesn't need to be packaged before streaming to the GPU for processing. 
Instead, they can be generated directly on the GPU using existing model and texture assets. Of course, Rockstar aims to utilize as many preloaded GPU textures as possible while maintaining a realistic variety in the scene. Moreover, this system allows them to control the number of preloaded textures used in a scene. For instance, more textures can be preloaded for complex scenes and fewer for simpler ones. The goal of this video is to provide an overview of the key aspects of this new system, so I won't delve into every example described in the patent. Turning to the details of the specified metadata, in a particularly advantageous embodiment, the following metadata is included for each model and texture, IDs, property tags, match tags, randomization restrictions, expression data, and optimization data. While this selection of metadata has been found advantageous, different groupings and subsets of these tags can be mixed and matched as needed to accomplish particular design goals without departing from the spirit and advantages of the present disclosed inventions. The uses, embodiments, and benefits of each of these fields are described as follows. These elements constitute the metadata, and while I won't delve into each one individually, they essentially represent the various tagging methods Rockstar employs to organize models and textures. These tags facilitate accurate and efficient filtering and sorting of assets within the virtual world. I trust this video provided you with an understanding of the tagging system Rockstar has devised. I'm personally excited about the potential for greater NPC variety in this vast world. There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've got to warn you, what we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, because we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here, the cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? 
Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80, on the GTA 6 subreddit, solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop, positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6. That would be a completely new gameplay element in the GTA series, so we have a lot to look forward to. Tell me what are your thoughts and opinions about Jason's potential background, whether he's linked to law enforcement or not, as it could shed more light on this intriguing speculation. The GTA 6 community has just found some major clues left by Rockstar Games, and it was under our nose the whole time. GTA 6's Trailer 1 revealed a ton of new things about the game off the bat, but recently, there's been even more developments that show off the GTA 6 main character story, Lucia. We learn a bunch of new things about her background, so if you're not interested in potential spoilers, this may not be the video for you. This information is directly from Rockstar Games, so this is the real deal. So getting into the details of Lucia's jail cell, let's focus on those newspaper clippings. I'll do my best to zoom in and enhance the image, but there are two distinct white clippings with black text. One of them appears to have a portrait, and I can only speculate that it might resemble a modern-day wanted poster. 
This could be showcasing the story of Lucia's alleged crime, accompanied by an image like a visual representation of what she's accused of. It's almost akin to a wanted picture that you'd find in a newspaper. This phenomenon isn't unheard of in real life. When people do something noteworthy or newsworthy, it's not uncommon for them to keep a record of it, like an article, and put it up on their wall as a sort of memento. It's like a snapshot of a moment in their life, even if it involves legal trouble. So Lucia might be preserving this particular newspaper clipping as a piece of her history, whether it's for sentimental reasons or perhaps as a reminder of the circumstances that led to her incarceration. Now let's broaden the scope a bit and draw comparisons to previous GTA protagonists. Take Michael DeSanta, for instance. His mansion has family photos on the walls. Franklin Clinton's house features similar personal touches. Even Trevor Phillips, in his trailer, has pictures that tell a story about his life. It's not just confined to the HD era. Even in the 3D era games, characters had their own way of leaving traces of their lives in their living spaces. This inclination to personalize living spaces is fascinating. In Lucia's case, the jail cell is an unexpected canvas for her personal story. It makes you wonder about her background, the choices she made, and the events that led her to that cell. Exploring these details could give us a deeper understanding of who she is and why she's in the predicament we find her in. Considering Lucia's attachment to those newspaper clippings, it raises interesting questions about her attitude towards her crimes. Perhaps she finds a sense of pride or even enjoys the bit of notoriety or fame she's garnered from her actions. Keeping those clippings might be her way of cherishing the attention or recognition she's received. The prospect of spending a substantial amount of time in prison also suggests that it could involve more than just a brief cutscene, but potentially a series of missions within the jail environment. Now, shifting our attention to the picture above the bunk bed, it's a bit of a visual puzzle. While it's challenging to discern details, on the left side, there's a guy with a drink in hand, donning a white t-shirt. Next to him is a woman with voluminous hair, and in the foreground, there's another figure. This composition raises the question of whether these individuals could be Lucia's family. The dynamics and connections between characters are often crucial in unraveling the narrative of any GTA game. Acknowledging my limited knowledge about jail life, it's uncertain whether inmates generally have the privilege of keeping photographs with them as mementos. However, in this specific scenario, it appears that Lucia can. This might imply that the prison depicted isn't a maximum security facility, given the freedom for inmates to keep personal items. While the setting is far from casual, it offers a level of interaction and mobility, allowing inmates to go outside, engage in conversations, sit at tables, and soak in sunlight. The orange jumpsuits signify their status, but the absence of being handcuffed to the ground suggests a certain level of relative freedom. In this context, the allowance of pictures and photographs could offer an additional layer of insight into the characters and their personal connections, providing players with a unique perspective on Lucia's life both inside and outside the jail cell. Taking a closer look at the latest image, which I've adjusted to bring out more details, there's another intriguing photograph. A guy in an orange shirt catches the eye, positioned alongside two women on the right. The one on the left appears to be sporting a hat and sunglasses, although discerning whether any of them is Lucia remains challenging. They could very well be family members, close friends, or simply individuals from her social circle. Amidst all the uncertainty, Lucia seems notably fixated on reflecting upon her actions and the community's response. Beyond this, it's evident that Lucia maintains a distinct connection with a specific group of people, as indicated by the presence of their pictures in her jail cell. It's not just about her individual experience. There's a shared history captured in those photographs, hinting at relationships that go beyond the confines of the jail cell. Directly below the image featuring the guy in the orange shirt and the other girls, there's yet another photograph. Although the details are obscured, the presence of someone standing in the picture is noticeable. Lucia is seemingly constructing a collage of photos, creating a visual narrative that serves as a repository of memories. These images might play a crucial role in not only grounding her within the context of her relationships, but also providing a semblance of continuity and connection to the outside world. It's worth mentioning that the footage I'm working with is the highest quality version sourced from YouTube, as Rockstar hasn't officially released it on their Newswire page. Despite being in 4K, the YouTube upload might introduce some compromises in image quality, so there could be nuances in the pictures that we might miss. Once Rockstar throws the official trailer our way, we're likely to get a treasure trove of additional details. But for now, let's roll up our sleeves and dissect the snapshots from Lucia's jail cell. Apart from Jason, there's another player in Lucia's story. Stephanie, the Leonid Department of Corrections representative. 
Picture a different scene though. Lucia's cell is a far cry from Stephanie's office. In this particular shot, Stephanie's unmistakably holding down the fort in a black dress, center stage on the right. Flip to the left frame, and there she is again, donning a red dress on the right side. Behind her, there's a framed message teasing with, if you miss, but the rest remains a mystery due to some pesky screen glare. Now let's make a full turn and voila, another Stephanie pick in the bottom right corner. This time, the backdrop suggests a domestic scene, perhaps with a partner. She's got on some bluish shades, slightly different from what we catch a glimpse of later. The background paints a more vivid picture, a collection of books, pamphlets, a conspicuous high visibility vest, and yet another potential newspaper clipping. Whether it's a routine thing or an anomaly, the jury's still out. So, what's the inside scoop on Lucia's backstory gleaned from her jail cell environment? Well, the state of the jail suggests it's seen better days. Peeling bits off the windows, hint at a place with some history. That initial shot with the barbed wire strongly implies it's not a newly minted spot. It's got the wear and tear of time etched into its surroundings. As we immerse ourselves in the intricacies of Lucia's life within the jail cell, the narrative unfolds as a captivating tapestry, each element contributing to the rich story. The subtleties, from the cryptic newspaper clippings, shedding light on her alleged crimes to the carefully chosen photographs, depicting relationships with family and friends, create a vivid and compelling portrait of Lucia's existence, both within and beyond the jail confines. The personal touches within her confined space evoke a rawness that harks back to the legacy of previous GTA protagonists. Lucia's jail cell, unexpectedly, becomes a canvas revealing a story that transcends the conventional GTA narrative. It prompts curiosity about her past, the decisions that led her to incarceration, and the intricate web of relationships that define her. The permission granted for personal items like photographs in the jail cell adds an intriguing layer to the storytelling, suggesting a nuanced sense of freedom within the constraints of imprisonment. Lucia's attachment to these items, whether they be newspaper clippings or family snapshots, beckons players to ponder her perspective on her own actions and the recognition she may have garnered. While we eagerly await the official trailer release from Rockstar, it is clear that Lucia's story is woven with complexities and mysteries that leave us yearning for more. The weathered appearance of the jail environment, with peeling bits off the windows and subtle signs of aging, hints at a setting steeped in history, amplifying the anticipation for the unfolding narrative. Thus, with these glimpses into Lucia's world, we find ourselves surrounded by a plethora of unanswered questions. When did she find herself behind bars, and what duration does her stay entail? Your insights are eagerly awaited in the comment section. If this exploration into Lucia's jail cell has piqued your interest, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Comment down below what you believe caused Lucia to go to jail. And did you spot these hidden Easter eggs in the trailer on your first watch? I'm interested to hear back from you guys. We're delving into the most recent iteration of the GTA 6 mapping project. Our focus centers on a comprehensive analysis of the map's latest updates, incorporating newly unveiled areas and event coordinates derived from leaked information. Additionally, we will explore fresh insights from the initial official trailer, including the revelation of an accessible plaza. A noteworthy aspect we'll be dissecting is the potential expansiveness of the map, hinted at by newfound highway evidence in the trailer. Furthermore, we'll examine a conceptual representation illustrating the potential magnitude of the GTA 6 map. The trailer also provides a glimpse of Starfish Island, a detail we'll thoroughly cover in today's session. Let's initiate our examination by diving into the GTA 6 mapping project. For those not aware, this stands as the most extensive and refined community-driven mapping endeavor, aiming to deduce the GTA 6 map with the utmost accuracy. This endeavor leverages evidence from leaks and the primary official trailer. In our previous map analysis, we scrutinized significant alterations in the Borgorn and Grass Rivers areas, expanding the map to an impressive 18 by 8 kilometers. However, today's exploration will predominantly focus on alterations in the Vice City region. Rumors suggest that the GTA 6 map will encompass three major cities, with Vice City and Borgorn being the identified urban centers so far. Vice City, drawing inspiration from Miami, and Portalhorn, a fusion of Gulf cities in Florida. The speculated third city could possibly be modeled after Orlando or Tampa. Earlier rumors hinted at Yorktown being the third city, approximately aligning with Tampa's location. However, intriguingly, 
Structures observed in leaked material from Port Gorn were reminiscent of Panama City. Rockstar appears to amalgamate elements from distinct cities to craft a unique virtual landscape. Turning our attention specifically to Vice City, notable modifications are discernible in the stockyard and crossdown area. While these alterations may not be immediately apparent, a thorough comparison with the prior map iteration reveals notable changes in street layouts for improved connectivity. Building positions, including the relocation of the Jack of Hearts nightclub, featured in leaks and the trailer, signify significant shifts. Adjacent structures visible in the trailer's music video shoot scene have undergone subtle rearrangements. A noteworthy addition to the GTA 6 mapping project encompasses events gleaned from leaks, introducing a dynamic layer to our understanding of the evolving landscape. At present, we've pinpointed four events on the map, marked by light blue dots. These events include the missing persons poster at the liquor store, the big cat cage roof at Everyday Art Elephant, and the Everyday Art Sidewalk Creep, all clustered around the Crosstown SL Stockyard area. Meanwhile, there have been notable changes in the Vice River area, with some buildings rearranged and brought closer to the river. The overall shape of this area has also been altered, and a new marina building near the airport has been introduced, based on recent evidence. Another significant alteration concerns the incorporation of Ica and Belleville into Vice City. While their status remains speculative, with their names displayed in red, Ica is purportedly inspired by Alapata, a neighborhood in Miami-Dade, while Belleville draws parallels with Brownsville. Formerly perceived as small towns on the outskirts of Vice City, they're now considered part of the Vicedale neighborhoods, following fresh evidence. This reclassification potentially places scenes like the police officer pursuing the overweight individual in the Belleville neighborhood. Furthermore, a notable discovery linked to Tommy Versetti's mansion has surfaced. Star Island's inclusion in the game has been confirmed, evidenced by its appearance behind the Rockstar game's title, and in a scene featuring a bikini-clad woman. This revelation solidifies its status as a game location, with strong ties to the original Starfish Island from GTA Vice City, where Vercetti's estate was situated. The prospect of encountering the mansion in-game, whether as an accessible structure or an abandoned relic, remains uncertain but tantalizing. The mention of Star Island remains speculative, as indicated by its red font, leaving the possibility open for it to be renamed Starfish Island or something else. These developments encapsulate the latest updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Additionally, let's delve into a Reddit post that has garnered attention. I'm still very intrigued by the prospect. This is a full accessible plaza. The full access plaza featured in the trailer has piqued my curiosity. This snapshot is captured during a scene where Jason and Lucia evade the police momentarily. Positioned on the right side of the frame is a sign, presumably denoting a mall within the game. Notably, several brand names, including Kowalski, Kalis, Scala, and Alpha, are visible on this sign. Furthermore, a portion of the mall's name briefly appears, starting with Ever. Could it be Evergreen Plaza or another variation? The answer remains elusive, and we'll have to await further developments to unravel this mystery. I can pretty much bet on it that this shit will indeed be fully accessible. Most of the signs on that structure look to be clothing and accessory shops, which would easily mean it's accessible to us. I'm really hoping the mall makes a return in this one, and will serve kind of as a player hub when online drops. Oh, that would be good. Maybe a spot where you can't attack. Could meet people to join up for races, heists, etc. That would be pretty neat. Now let's shift our focus to some additional findings that might provide evidence for the existence of the third major city in GTA 6. Furthermore, we'll explore why the actual map size of GTA 6 could potentially surpass the estimations derived from the mapping project. Possible map length. Since we don't know what's in the northern part of the map, and we're not sure if it ends where the current mapping project suggests, I thought the map could look something like this. I get that a map like this might be three, four times bigger than GTA 5, so it could be a lot, but we can't be sure about Rockstar's plans. I also think so, because on the east coast of the current map, we have Vice City's predicted beach areas going almost to the very top. Kind of feels like the map shouldn't just end there. And if Port Gellhorn is based on Fort Myers, then maybe Tampa and Orlando could be there too. But with the current borders, there's not enough space even for a small town. Also, shaped like this, the map would resemble actual Florida more. What do you think? Now, here's something to ponder. If the map indeed resembles this depiction, it would be quite astonishing. It's intriguing how the leaks have remained silent about the northern portion of the map. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments. How far north do you speculate the map extends? Do you reckon it's just slightly beyond what's revealed in the mapping project? Or could there be a substantial unseen territory? Shifting gears, let's delve into a significant discovery. 
An observation on the size of the map using highway exits as a guide. I believe that two blink and you'll miss them shots from the trailer, combined with something I saw in the leaks, have given us a serious hint as to just how big the map for GTA VZ might turn out to be, specifically north-south. The first is the shot of the man grabbing his crotch while stopped on the side of the highway. Specifically, the highway exit signs in the background. They suggest that this shot is being taken from just north of exit 14 on the highway, if turning left has you going east and turning right has you going west. What's more, the GTA VSI mapping project believes that the highway that this shot is taken from is Interstate 97. Adding to this, there's this shot from earlier in the trailer of the woman in the gold dress, hanging out the top of a convertible traveling down I-404, heading towards a junction with 1, 97. At the very start of that clip, you can catch the exit number on the sign she's driving under. You can't see all of it, but to me, it looks more like exit 18 than exit 1B. This one is more speculative though. Now, I'm about to get into the leaks, so I can't post any pictures. There's a clip in the leaks of a red ute heading northbound on 1, 97 towards the exit 13 AB junction that takes one to Washington Beach and Ekanfinaka before crashing. The mapping project has been using the leaks to create their maps, and they've placed that stretch of 1, 97 north of Mr. Crotchgrab from the trailer, running through the stockyard neighborhood. This, to me, indicates that the highway exits are going to follow a realistic number pattern, with the number increasing or decreasing increasing for every mile traveled. The question is, where does this put exit 12? Exit 11? All the exits going up to 1? I've taken the latest version of the mapping project's map and pointed out where exits 14 and 13 are located. Then, extrapolating from there and using the map's grid as a handy guide, I drew where all the exits further down the numbering scheme might be located. I ran out of room to put exit numbers at hash 9. If 1, 97 is going to keep following the same numbering scheme all the way north until it hits exit 1, then it's likely that the map is going to be far bigger than we currently think it is, and what's been shown and plotted out so far. In fact, I think the only reason nothing's been plotted up there so far is because so much so far has focused on Vice City and its environs. One, 4042 could wind up running just as far north, allowing for a few extra miles and exit numbers to accommodate it crossing the Everglades grass rivers before turning north, as I-75 in real life does. Bottom line, the map for this game is going to be enormous. There's been some chatter among you all about another potential scenario. The possibility of I-97 serving as a loop highway encircling the map's perimeter, similar to GTA V. While this is a valid consideration, I've largely dismissed it due to a straightforward reason. As previously mentioned, I-44 boasts exit numbers and highway markers that suggest its considerable length, likely extending westward until it reaches the Gulf of Mexico before veering north, mimicking the real-life trajectory of I-75. If the map's northern boundary remains close to its current cutoff point and I-97 extends west and south extensively, then it's plausible that I-44 would mirror this pattern in the opposite direction. While the notion of two loop highways isn't entirely implausible, it could potentially introduce redundancy. Additionally, in GTA V, the loop highway wasn't simply labeled under one name. The segment along the coast was dubbed the Great Ocean Highway. Highway, while the inland stretch traversing the desert was referred to as the Sonora Freeway. Moreover, within Los Santos, various freeways possessed distinct names and numbers, even when merging seamlessly, such as the Del Perro, La Puerta, and La Mesa freeways. My hypothesis currently is that there is a loop highway, but that one, 97 and I-404, are two halves of it. They both start in Vice City and intersect in Crosstown. 1. 97 runs up the Atlantic coast. 1. 404 runs west through the Grass Rivers, and then turns north to run up the Gulf Coast, and they both meet at a point further north. Whether that point is a city, a smaller town, or something else, that is still unknown. Feel free to drop your thoughts in the comments regarding everything covered in today's video, particularly this astonishing discovery. There's substantial evidence hinting at a larger map size, but I'm eager to hear your input. We're going to explore 30 confirmed features of GTA 6 that Rockstar Games has officially talked about. But first, a quick heads up. The info we're sharing comes from a security breach and leak of GTA 6 pre-alpha footage. Rockstar Games acknowledged this leak on their official Twitter. Just to be clear, we won't be showing any gameplay footage due to possible copyright issues, but we'll definitely dive into these cool features. Feature 1. Looks aren't just for show. The reactions of non-playable characters, NPCs in GTA 6, are pretty fascinating. How clean your character is and their overall appearance affect how these in-game characters respond to you. It adds a cool layer to the game considering how NPCs react differently based on your character's appearance. Feature 2. Let's rev up the excitement with some serious vehicle action. Imagine cruising through the Everglades in a top-notch hovercraft. That's just one of the personal rides available right from the start. 
And there's more, like taking the wheel of a bold 1970 Ford Ranchero GT in striking red and black, owned by a character named Jason. Feature 3. Here's another level of immersion. Each character has their own stuff, so when you're playing as Jason, you can tap into Lucia's stash and vice versa. Say Jason's low on assault rifle bullets. If you're close to Lucia, you can ask her for some. It opens up a bunch of possibilities for teamwork and sharing resources in the game. Feature 4. For all you die-hard GTA fans, there's a new clothing store in town called Arches. It's got a fresh collection to amp up your character's style. Feature 5. Let's talk graphics. In GTA 6, the clothes are seriously detailed. Wrinkles, dirt marks, and even sweat. Paying so much attention to clothing details makes the characters look super real, adding a ton of authenticity and making the game more immersive. Feature 6. While exploring the vast game world of GTA 6, you'll see a seamless mix of modern vehicles in urban areas and older ones in rural spots like the Everglades. It gives that cool GTA vibe, whether you're cruising in a flashy city car or taking a nostalgic drive in the countryside. GTA 6 has a bunch of wheels to fit whatever mood you're in. Feature 7. During certain heists, there's a timer showing when the cops will show up. Some think it's a developer thing, but it could mean players need to plan their heists well, syncing with the police response for a perfect score. That'd definitely add an exciting twist. Feature 8. I'm buzzing about this one. GTA 6 will feature a massive aquarium. Yes, you heard that right. Players get to explore an aquarium within the game, adding a cool new element to the gameplay. Feature 9. There's a limit on inventory space. Players can't stockpile an endless number of items. A smart move would involve rummaging through crates and storage spots at the docks, to earn cash and gather valuable stuff, spicing up the gameplay. Feature 10. Here's something cool. In GTA 6, you're not stuck with your character's right side view like in GTA 5. Following Red Dead Redemption's lead, players can freely switch their character's preferred shoulder for a better view. It also changes which hand your character uses for weapons, making gameplay more immersive. Feature 11. GTA 6 adds a touch of reality with a dynamic day-night cycle. Shops don't stay open 24 7 anymore. Some close at night and reopen during the day, making the whole experience more immersive. Immersive. At night, the city changes vibe, less traffic, and a different feel altogether. Feature 12. Adding to the mix are special abilities, somewhat like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. From leaked gameplay, it looks like Jason has a unique skill. He can spot valuable stuff in the surroundings. They light up like hidden treasures, adding a whole new twist to the game. Feature 13. Let's dive into some of the confirmed stuff in GTA 6. It's quite a mix. There are spear guns, bolt-action sniper rifles, and a bunch of golf clubs, wedges, irons, drivers. Also, Players can use a crowbar to open containers and grab valuable stuff. There's more. Smoke grenades, flashbangs, golf balls, and tracker jammers to dodge the cops. Snatching fancy cars might need special tools like the immobilizer bypass. Loads of choices to make gameplay super immersive and fun. Feature 14. Moving on to the awesome in-game places we've seen. There's a bunch. Tennis courts, a huge stadium, and even a museum. All with interactive insides. It's bringing back the exploration vibe we loved in GTA 4, and that's got us hyped for GTA 6. Feature 15. In in a cool scene during a diner robbery, a non-playable character NPC, was visibly relieved when the cops showed up, saying, Finally, thank heavens. This shows how smart the AI is in GTA 6, and it's a sign of Rockstar's attention to detail. Feature 16. Get ready for a huge and diverse map to roam around. GTA 6 covers the whole shebang of Vice City and its surroundings, offering tons to explore. You've got the bustling city, scenic beachfronts, Everglades-like grass rivers, the charm of Florida Keys, and the quaint Port Gellhorn. Port Gellhorn even gets its own police department, showing different areas with their own rules, kind of like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. So, where's your first stop in GTA 6? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Feature 17. Time for a tour of interiors in GTA 6. There's a bunch of places waiting to be discovered. One cool spot making a comeback is Escobar International Airport, giving us those Vice City vibes. Exploring the airport could unlock a load of side missions, opening up endless possibilities for adventures. Feature 18. Tourism's a big deal in GTA 6, making the game world feel alive. You'll stumble upon a clever take on a famous theme park, kinda like Disney World. It's a thrilling spot to dive into, and get this, there's even the International Space Station. Rockstar's really going all out to make GTA 6 an awesome experience. Feature 19. The characters you'll meet in GTA 6 have had some major upgrades. They come in all shapes and sizes, some towering and impressive, others more on the average or smaller side. This variety really brings the in-game city to life, making it feel more realistic. Rockstar's definitely set a high standard in gaming with this, and I can't wait to dive into this amazing world they've created. Feature 20 new gameplay features are here, and one that stands out is using assault rifles while inside a vehicle. It's going to shake up how players handle combat. Feature 21 money in GTA 6 works differently. You don't just magically get more cash in your bank account after robbing a store. Instead, you physically grab the cash from the store counter using a button. It makes the whole experience more real and interactive. Feature 22. Now this is wild. 
The vehicle customization options in GTA 6 are something else. When you get into a vehicle, hit the left D-pad for the vehicle options menu. You can tweak the seat, fix the steering wheel, and even jazz up the interior. There's talk that this might be limited to developers, but I'm hoping it's for everyone in the final game. Feature 23. There's a ton more to do in GTA 6. The game amps up interaction by letting you handle money, USB drives, weapons, food, and different clothes, giving you more control over the world. Feature 24 hats off to hat customization. In GTA 6, you can style your hat in different ways, showing off your fashion taste. It might seem small, but it makes your character really stand out. Feature 25. Here's a neat twist. When you're on the run and hijack a ride, your criminal description changes a bit, leaving out specific car details. This tricks witnesses and stops them from telling the cops about your getaway car. Smart move to stay hidden and adds a tactical side to the game. Feature 26. The big news? GTA 6 is officially scheduled to hit stores. Feature 27. Something fun and quirky. You can actually interact with gumball machines in the game and snag some gumballs. It's a small thing, but it adds a nice touch of reality to the game. Feature 28. Talking about the cops and what's happening in the game world. During gameplay, I saw the police doing traffic stops, DUI tests, and even searching vehicles. Also, the in-game map shows random NPC AI car accidents, and the cops rush in to handle these, making the virtual world feel genuinely chaotic. Feature 29. Time to talk weapons. GTA 6 brings a massive range of guns, from pistols to heavy artillery. With so many options, the action stays intense, making sure you're armed armed for any situation. Feature 30 GTA 6 is bringing in an inventory system, like what we saw in Red Dead Redemption 2. Looks like Lucy has got a sports bag hinting at that. Bonus features. Feature 31. Let's take a darker turn, handling bodies in the game. It adds a creepy level of realism. Players can deal with and move bodies, adding a whole different vibe to GTA 6. It'll be interesting to see how this affects the gameplay. Feature 32. NPCs in GTA 6 are shaping up to be super interesting. Rockstar's bringing in the immersive vibes we loved in Red Dead Redemption 2, and the potential here is huge. The improvements they've made could take the game to a whole new level. I'm super hyped to see what Rockstar's got up their sleeve. Feature 33 GTA 6 starts off with a bang, small time heists, and the chance to rob small businesses, giving you a thrilling start. Feature 34. You'll get your hands on a bunch of tools to up your crime game in GTA 6. Lockpicks, hacking gadgets, and more are there to help you handle whatever challenges come your way. Is there a chance we'll see a remaster, or even just a port of GTA 4 hit the shelves this year? It's quite likely, though I'm leaning towards it being more of a port, but let's dive into the details. Back in July 2022, Tez Funz 2 made it known on Twitter that as per a reliable source with clear accuracy on Rockstar plans, remasters of GTA 4 and RDR 1 were on the table a few years ago, but Rockstar chose not to proceed with the projects in mind. The poor reception of the Trilogy Definitive Edition might be a reason behind that decision. After that post surfaced, the topic went quiet for quite a few months. Over a year, in fact. Then, out of the blue last year, Rockstar Games dropped the bombshell and revealed a fresh project in the Red Dead Redemption universe. Although there hasn't been an official announcement regarding the GTA 4 remaster, there are indications pointing towards the existence of such a project, with a potential release date as early as March 2024. Take 2. The parent company of Rockstar Games had previously hinted at having two re-releases in the pipeline set to launch by that specific month. The original Red Dead Redemption was among the two games mentioned leaving room for speculation that the other could potentially be GTA 4. While it's also plausible that this could be an entirely different project unrelated to the Grand Theft Auto franchise, it's worth considering. This isn't the first time there have been murmurs about a GTA 4 re-release or remaster. Returning to the Red Dead Redemption 1 port, unfortunately, it wasn't the news fans were hoping for. Instead of a full remake or remaster, the developer revealed a port with no new content. Typically, when people hear about a remaster or remake, they expect incredible graphic improvements, higher resolution, better quality textures, and advanced graphical effects like ray tracing. Contrary to these expectations, many argue that this game needs significant improvements, particularly concerning inconsistencies in the story. In 2018, Red Dead Redemption 2 was released as a prequel, introducing story elements that created inconsistencies with the first Red Dead Redemption where major characters like Arthur Morgan were never mentioned. When Rockstar opted for a port instead of improving the game, which was already 13 years old, disappointment arose. The desire for a remaster or remake persisted, fueled by rumors since 2021. These speculations continued until the summer of 2023. The uncertainty around whether a remake was genuinely being considered remains, with some recent rumors possibly being misunderstandings about the port project. It's been speculated that the cancellation of a Red Dead Redemption remake or remaster might be attributed to the poor reception of GTA. The trilogy, 
the definitive edition. Alternatively, the developer could have redirected resources towards the development of GTA 6. Regarding GTA 6, in December, we were finally treated to the much-anticipated trailer for the upcoming installment. However, it came with a significant letdown the announcement of a 2025 release date. As we approach the end of 2024, this seems like the ideal time to introduce a new game under the GTA banner to keep the franchise vibrant. Hence, a port of GTA 4 appears fitting for this year. Most players familiar with GTA 4 acknowledge the aging of the game. Despite being ahead of its time upon its 2008 release, over 15 years ago, it's showing signs of wear. Notably, the PC version faced persistent performance issues, maintaining its reputation as one of Rockstar Games' worst optimized titles. The irony lies in the fact that, despite these problems, GTA 4 is widely regarded as one of the best entries in the Grand Theft Auto series. Understanding the poor optimization of the PC version remains a mystery. Even with a series of patches, the issues persisted, suggesting a more profound problem. Originally designed for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles with different hardware architectures, porting GTA 4 to PC necessitated significant modifications. Unfortunately, not all of these changes were executed appropriately. Compounding the matter, the game was built on the advanced and intricate Rage Engine, adding complexity to its optimization. Unlike consoles with standardized hardware, the diverse range of PC hardware available at the time of GTA 4's release posed a challenge. The game's initial high hardware requirements excluded many players with less powerful computers from enjoying a smooth gaming experience. Unoptimized code contributed to performance issues, even on high-end PCs, with notable problems in managing CPU and GPU resources, leading to performance bottlenecks. How else can we gather indications that a GTA 4 remaster or port is possibly in development? Well, in September 2022, Take-Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, made a notable move. They took down a fan-made mod for GTA 4, known as the Definitive Edition. This mod compilation, comprised of various mods and fan-made patches, aimed to significantly enhance the visual and experiential aspects of the 15-year-old game on PC. The roots of this remastering endeavor with mods trace back to 2016, when the mod pack for GTA Vice City, named Reborn, initiated the project. Over time, it expanded to encompass mods for GTA 3, San Andreas, Chinatown Wars, and other Rockstar games like Bully and the Warriors. According to information from the author's website, the group behind this project confirmed that their files, hosted on Mediafire, received a DMCA takedown notice. Presumably issued by Rockstar or its parent company Take-Two Interactive, this notice mandated the removal of the Definitive Edition project from their website. This development was communicated through a tweet from the Definitive Edition project. Bad news, guys. Appreciate it if you got PPL to raise awareness. Spread the word as much as possible. I knew this day was coming. Here we are with a DMCA by Rockstar, I assume, on our GTA 4 Definitive Edition patch. Well, I suppose we need to remove all GTA 4 related stuff from the website. Curiously, from what I understand, the takedown specifically focused on the GTA 4 mod. As of now, the original trilogy mods on the site remain untouched, but the project doesn't express a high level of confidence in the longevity of these mods being available. No DMCA for the original trilogy, yet. Just GTA 4. So, for now I think the trilogy is safe. Just enjoy it when you still can, they wrote. This isn't the initial instance of Take-Two Interactive taking action against mods. Their track record indicates a protective stance towards their intellectual properties. They've previously taken down mods before, a practice observed prior to the unveiling of their own definitive edition for the original GTA trilogy. Despite its problematic release, that project proved to be financially successful. Many in the gaming community express a desire for Rockstar Games to follow suit and release a remastered version of GTA 4, similar to what the studio accomplished with the trilogy. Xbox One, Series X and S users currently enjoy the luxury of playing GTA 4 through backward compatibility. However, this isn't the case for PS4 and PS5 users. Should Rockstar opt not only for re-release support, but also for substantial changes to the game, there are certain aspects of GTA 4 that could benefit from improvement. First and foremost, graphics are an apparent focal point, a common aspect of remasters to enhance the visual experience. It's worth noting that beyond the expected graphical upgrades, GTA 4 might require more nuanced improvements. One aspect that garnered criticism was the peculiar yellow filter present in the original game, making everything appear dull. This yellow tint 
a characteristic of the late 2000s and 2010s, was often disparaged when employed in video games. For an open-world game like GTA 4, many argue that this filter made little sense. Various graphics mods for the PC version, such as the Ice Enhancer 4, have demonstrated that Liberty City can maintain its gritty atmosphere without this filter. For a glimpse of what a GTA 4 remaster could potentially achieve, the Ice Enhancer 4 graphics mod offers an illustrative example. Developed over several years by the skilled modder Heisam Kilani, this fan-made graphics overhaul aimed to elevate the game's visual experience well beyond its original state. On the flip side, individuals who have a fondness for the original yellow filter in the game may not find favor with this mod. If Rockstar opts to stay faithful to the original and preserve the color scheme, it would still be beneficial to update the environmental textures. Over time, these textures have aged considerably, featuring a noticeably low resolution that now appears outdated. Moving on, one of the most memorable aspects of GTA 4 is the recurring scenario where Roman calls Nico to go bowling. Nico, it's your cousin. You want to shoot some pool? Roman, I can't talk now. Damn! This feature, while often considered a source of humor, can be somewhat bothersome. Nico's friends frequently reaching out for social activities can prove distracting, especially during critical missions or while immersed in the exploration of the open world. Rejecting these calls actually decreases your relationship with that friend, impacting specific benefits they offer. GTA 5 addressed this issue by making interactions with friends more user-friendly, introducing new activities to engage in. Incorporating similar friend activities in a remastered version of GTA 4 would be a positive and welcome addition. Another area of improvement is clothing and customization. The clothing options for Nico in GTA 4 are quite limited. Notably, the game lacks the iconic fingerless gloves seen in promotional art and trailers. A remaster could rectify this, especially considering the community's disappointment over their absence. Additionally, though hairstyles were planned, they were not included in the final game, as evidenced by the presence of barbershops in the game files. A remaster could enhance clothing options and introduce hairstyle changes, mirroring the customization available in GTA Online. Unlike GTA San Andreas or GTA 5, GTA 4 lacks car customization features. Players can only randomly change their vehicle's primary color at a pay and spray. While this might not have been a significant issue in earlier titles like GTA 3 or Vice City, it does feel like an oversight in a more modern title like GTA 4. A remaster could bring in more extensive vehicle customization options. Given the central role of vehicles in the Grand Theft Auto games, enhancing customization not only adds depth but also makes the gaming experience more immersive. In fact, acquiring new and rare cars is often considered the most appealing aspect of GTA Online, and a remaster could significantly enhance the appeal of GTA 4 through this single feature alone. While Rockstar Games has been dedicating their efforts to newer projects, it's intriguing to observe that GTA 4 hasn't been entirely neglected by them. Surprisingly, the game has received updates, albeit sporadically, even years after its initial release in 2008. A notable recent update, released in 2023, caught many fans off guard. This update primarily focused on security, aiming to safeguard the game's source code from potential leaks. It's interesting to reflect on the context surrounding this security update. Since Rockstar Games removed the multiplayer aspects of the GTA 4 Complete Edition on Steam and their launcher in March 2020, the need for such security measures raises questions. When we talk about the positive aspects of this partnership, it's essential to highlight the potential benefits that can emerge from Rockstar's newfound support for the modding community. One of the significant upsides is the acknowledgement of the brilliant and skilled developers behind the modding scene. For years, these developers have worked tirelessly to create unique and engaging experiences within the GTA universe. With Rockstar stepping into a collaborative space with CFX, there's an opportunity for a more symbiotic relationship. The infusion of official support could mean more resources, tools, and encouragement for modders to continue pushing the boundaries of what's possible within the GTA ecosystem. This collaboration might lead to innovative gameplay features, improved server stability, and an overall better experience for both players and content creators. Moreover, the recognition from a gaming giant like Rockstar could open doors for these modders in the industry. It may pave the way for potential collaborations, official partnerships, or even job opportunities within the gaming development sphere. This, in turn, could elevate the modding community to a more prominent and respected position within the gaming landscape. However, it's crucial to approach these potential benefits with cautious optimism. While the partnership appears promising on the surface, 
The reality lies in how Rockstar manages the delicate balance between maintaining control over its intellectual property and allowing creative freedom for the modding community. The outcome will heavily depend on Rockstar's willingness to foster collaboration, rather than imposing strict regulations. As GTA 6 draws closer, the impact of this collaboration will become more apparent. Whether it becomes a model for future partnerships between game developers and modders, or encounters challenges that hinder its success remains to be seen. The dynamics between Rockstar and the modding community could shape the future landscape of custom servers, roleplay experiences, and the overall modding scene in the gaming world. Stay tuned as we continue to explore and analyze the evolving relationship between Rockstar and the modding community. On the positive side, there's a glimmer of hope that Rockstar's acknowledgement of mods enhancing the player experience could pave the way for more modding support in GTA 6. This shift in perspective might lead to a more collaborative environment where modders can contribute to the game's richness without fear of stringent restrictions. With Rockstar officially and financially supporting 5M, the CFX team gains more resources to elevate the GTA 6 server. This could mean a server even more impressive than the ones they currently run. The fact that 5M is now a Rockstar Games product suggests a vested interest in its success, promising additional funding and manpower to ensure its flourishing. An intriguing prospect emerges concerning the accessibility of custom servers. Currently limited to PC players, there's speculation that GTA 6 might integrate dedicated servers within the game itself, eliminating the need for external programs like 5M. If this unfolds, it opens the door for console players to join the custom server experience, broadening the player base and community. Moreover, Rockstar seems to be attuned to fan desires. Despite a larger audience watching RP compared to those actively playing it, Rockstar appears committed to making improvements. Their intent to let custom servers thrive suggests a more fan-centric approach, acknowledging and catering to the desires of the gaming community. However, there are potential pitfalls to consider. The most glaring concern is Rockstar's inclination to monetize these servers. While the specifics remain uncertain, it's almost certain that some form of monetization, be it through custom server shark cards or a pay-to-play system, will be implemented. This could introduce a paywall, affecting the accessibility and enjoyment of custom servers for certain players. As we navigate through this evolving landscape of Rockstar's partnership with 5M, the delicate balance between fostering creativity and implementing monetization strategies will determine the ultimate impact on the gaming community. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the complexities of this collaboration and its implications for GTA 6 and the modding community. Let's unpack this a bit more. The whole monetization story got its moment in the spotlight during an earnings report where Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick spilled the beans. He essentially said, if folks are messing around with our intellectual property, why not make a buck or two? It's a straightforward business move, really. Taking a page from the unprecedented success of GTA Online, it seems like Rockstar caught a glimpse of how these free servers could turn into a money-making machine. Now the potential downside of this situation lies in the realm of competition. Rockstar's got its A-team working on the custom server's gig. That means anyone outside the Rockstar circle trying to whip up something akin to 5M is practically painting a target on themselves for a cease and desist. Let's face it, Rockstar might have eyed this strategic move with 5M from the get-go. However, with those servers gaining crazy popularity and the game becoming a sensation on Twitch and YouTube, shutting it down wouldn't have been the smart play. Instead, they pulled off a masterstroke, acquiring the team behind the biggest servers, effectively cornering the market and positioning themselves to profit from any potential imitators. Now, with GTA 6 on the horizon and servers in the works, Rockstar's sitting pretty. Some in the gaming community are even giving them a nod for finally throwing a bone to the community. But, and there's always a but, at the end of the day, Rockstar's the one making the rules. We'll all have to toe the line because, quite frankly, there won't be any other alternatives in the neighborhood. So, buckle up for Rockstar's GTA roleplay. It's going to be a wild ride. The landscape has already witnessed the repercussions, with servers and mods being handed the shutdown ticket for not playing by Rockstar's latest rulebook. The new mandates include a strict no to real-life vehicles, mission mods, and porting old Rockstar maps or assets rules that weren't in the playbook just a couple of years back. Now, while the financial backing from a mega corporation might seem like a savvy move on the surface, there's a lingering skepticism about whether it'll blossom into the fairy tale ending we've all been envisioning. It's a bit premature to slap a final verdict on the fate of 5M once GTA 6 hits the stage. Now, let's consider the potential repercussions for the vibrant RP community. While the partnership between Rockstar and 5M could bring about positive changes, 
there's an underlying worry within the RP enthusiasts. The fear is that with increased control and potential monetization, the organic and immersive RP experiences that players have come to love might face disruptions. RP communities thrive on creativity, flexibility, and a sense of autonomy. If Rockstar's influence leads to more rigid guidelines, it could alter the dynamic of these communities, potentially affecting the unique narratives and interactions that make RP servers so engaging. As we contemplate the potential impact, it's essential to look beyond the immediate horizon of GTA 6. The dynamics established through this collaboration could set a precedent for future interactions between gaming giants and modding communities across various games. Whether it becomes a model to be emulated or a cautionary tale will be closely watched by both players and industry stakeholders. The future of 5M and the broader modding community remains uncertain as GTA six inches closer to release. While concerns exist, there's also room for hope. The collaboration might lead to a harmonious blend of official support and community-driven creativity, enhancing the gaming experience for everyone involved. As players, content creators, and modders navigate this uncharted territory, the one constant is the love for the game and the shared hope for a positive evolution in the gaming landscape. Taking a stroll down memory lane, Rockstar's track record with monetization doesn't exactly calm the nerves. Add to that the current scenario where they're laying down the law for the CFX team, dictating what's permissible and what's not. This conjures up a cloud of uncertainty regarding the future of both 5M servers and the broader modding community. Personally, I'm a big fan of RP servers and that immersive content. It's my cup of tea. The idea that the same company that set the stage with GTA 5 might potentially tarnish 5M, turning it into a monetized maze with no alternatives, that's a bit of a buzzkill. Yet here we are in the waiting room until GTA 6 steps into the limelight.